Hello YouTubers, welcome back to the channel. Nice little project we got this week. Got a nice little piece of oak, well seasoned. I'm going to make a sort of pepper pie out of this one. Stick around, see how it's done. So, first up, what we're looking for is the centre. That's 250, that's 125. Line across there, and we also want to find this middle of that. That's 100 mil. I'm better off using that. And what we'll do is we'll turn an 80 mil circle inside of there. So, what I have there, centre of the wood, that's the edge of one hole. I've got about 40 mil that way. That should be from there to there, and that should take it out to about there and around there. 40, 40, 40, and 40. So that should give us a circle in there and a circle in there. Turn that in there, turn that in there, and that will be our salt and pepper holders. So I just want to mark that. And that. And I just want to drill two holes through there. I've done here so I've turned a piece of plywood that's, uh, that's a piece of 18 mil ply and then all that I do is I've marked I took that off and sanded it down but I've left the holes in there and all I do is drop that into the hole there bring that up which pinches it into place I have counted the board that so the screw heads should I come in there the screw heads are well below there so what I'm doing now I'm just putting two small screws either side just to hold this in place because either my block of oak was too long or my plywood backing board was too short because the screw that I put through there was only just catching the edge of it so it was just a bit of belt and braces really uh, the other thing I've done here is I've got a lump of lead that I screw on there because it's out of balance and ideally what you're looking for is perfect balance and you can see that lead is still a little bit too heavy because it is dropping to the bottom but not quite as quickly as it was so I can live with that because it's on that backing plate you don't want to be turning the lathe up too high. I'd turn this probably about, I think I've got about 600 revs, I think, um, which is enough just to hollow that. So here we go now, and we're getting to hollowing the actual bowl. This is just, you turn this as you would any other bowl, just standard bowl. The only thing you have to be careful of is not going out too far. I'm going to be very conscious where the edge is, how large this wants to be. We were aiming for an 80mm bowl, or 80mm cup. And what I've done is I've turned a block of wood with an 80mm spigot, I suppose you call it, on the end. And you'll see shortly how I use that. But I have to say this oak was really hard, it really was dense to turn. You see there I was just checking the depth. You want to maximize the depth of the bowl but at the same time you want to make sure you still leave yourself plenty of wood. Obviously you don't want to be going through the bottom.
what I've done there is I've just got in with a skew chisel because I want to give I don't want to start with a curved edge I want a flat on the edge of there because I am a light date going to be fitting some lids on there and what I want is the lid to fit in nice and slug nice and snug and nice and tight So now we got down to what I think is a nice shape, there's a nice curve on there and I'm just going to go in there and just sand the bowl out, same as I would any other bowl. I just want to give out a quick coat of finishing oil in there which is food safe which not only enhances the wood but that should stop any moisture soaking into the wood from possibly from the salt and really does enhance that oat and makes it look beautiful lovely natural colour in there so what we'll do now just turn that around do the other side so here we are now just more of the same I'm going to hollow out the opposite side of the piece of oak and I've just set my calipers at about 5mm less than what I need to just to give me a little bit of room to work with. So we're just carrying on to hollow this out in the normal way we would hollow any bowl. The only thing we really need to do is pay particular attention to that lump of wood that's flying around there every now and again. So what I've done there is I've just turned a scrap piece of wood and I've turned it so it just nice tight fit in the hole that I'd already turned so that I know that if it's a nice tight fit on there both holes will be exactly the same and then I can turn both the lids exactly the same. So almost there now I've just taken a tiny little piece out and that really is a good fit in there now. Really nice tight fit. So that was what I was looking for. So now we can just move to hollowing it out and try our best to make that hollow exactly the same as the other one. I think if you wanted to make these absolutely perfect, you could turn, you could cut a plywood uh, profile of a semicircle and fit in there, and you would end up with two exactly the same but I think if you're a reasonably proficient wood turner you should be able to get turn two that are very close to each other so here we go now and we're just hollowing this in the usual way just gradually working our way down through That oak is very hard to turn, it's a very hard wood. But you do reap the benefits when it's all finished, when it's all sanded, because it looks absolutely gorgeous. It's a beautiful piece of wood, and it will last, certainly last my lifetime. So, we'll just carry on down, we'll hollow this out. And then we we'll move on to the lids. And then just apply a coat of finishing oil. And then to turn two tops. So I'll cut this piece of oak for the lids and it measures 100 by 100 by 150. So I'm going to turn that down to around 90mm diameter and then that will make my two lids for me. So first thing I need to do is knock those corners off.
So I've gone as far as I can in there with my pratt off tool, because these are going to be my two lids. And I'll just saw that off. And then we'll start on the lid. So I've done, I've come in with my calipers. I've set these about, probably about 3 or 4 mil oversize. And I'm just marking on the bottom because the piece to the left hand side of the screen that's what's going to fit inside of the pots to give me my lid so what I need to do now is just turn this down so it's a nice tight fit inside of that pot so at this point it's just really just a little bit of trial and error you see on there that's almost there that's just a little rock in there so I come back in my skew chisel and what I do is I just turn my skew chisel up slightly, which gives me an undercut at the shoulder. And then I just bevel that edge over slightly. And that will lay for the curve inside of the pot. And we end up, that's a really good fit. So what I want to do now is just put a chucking point inside of there. So I need to go in. Just open that up slightly because what I want to do when I turn this around in a minute, I can put my jaw, jaws of my chuck inside of the bottom of that lid in expansion mode, which will then allow me to turn the top. So, this is going to be the lid now. I'm going to turn this into just a nice little lid with a little knob on top. Now this is going to be an everyday use, so it has to be functional, but it can look reasonably fancy at the same time. do is I'll take some of that away and just turn a nice bead on there. All turned up, that's all sanded down. That's quite nice. Let's put some sand and cedar on there and a bit of wax. That was lovely, a lovely golden colour. Bit of hatch of sheen. Oh, it's beautiful, really beautiful wood. So that's one half done. Now the difficult bit is turn another one. Is that the same as that? Let's put it on that side. Oh, here we go, YouTubers. Um, I put it on the bandsaw. As you can see, where those two screws went down through, I've cut them off. We don't need them anymore, and I've sanded it all up. Round it over the edges, made it all nice and smooth and very tactile. So now we'll give it a little bit of finishing oil. A bit in there, a bit in there. That oak does come up beautiful with a bit of oil on there. It does get that really lovely look. And 
it's not on the bottom. So what I intend to do is just take this down a little bit because I think that is too big for that size of that pot that it sits on. Although I have to be careful because that's about 90mm across there. So you need that in relation to that, but you need overall in relation to what it sits on. So I'm going to take this down a little bit and just see what it looks like. I've got quite a bit of wood, quite a bit of this wood, so if I mess this up I can always make another one. Let's just sign that up and I need to burn a wire line in there. Well probably not, I don't have well on that one. I'll just sign that up. So I've sanded that right down, come right down to 600, it's incredibly smooth. Stick a bit of sand and sealer on there. Have a quick buffing. Shine come on that already. So now I have to turn the second lid. I'm just going to have a very, very quick flick through here because it is exactly the same as I turned the first one. There is a great deal of skill involved in this with the wood turn on its own, own is quite difficult, but trying to turn two that are exactly the same with wood turning is very difficult to do. And to be honest, the best that I usually hope for is having two somewhat similar, and that's good enough for me. So, as I say, just a very quick flick through, just show you how I made the second one. Well, there you go, YouTubers. Something a little bit different. Bit of off-center turning. Lovely piece of oak, gorgeous. Two tops, same, almost similar. But they are very interchangeable, which is very nice. Lovely little project. My brother who tra trained as a chef, he asked me to do something like this quite a while ago and he wanted salt and pepper in there um, to keep by the side of his cooker for when he's cooking. So he can just grab a handful of each. I've made something very similar to that once before. He uses a table uh, cruet set or salt and pepper set. And I hope you can use this one. So that was another fun project. I did enjoy making that. So. It has been another great day in my workshop, so thank you all very much for watching. You take care of yourself. Oh, and I have been Steve Howe, and I'll see you all again next week. Bye-bye.